In the gentle embrace of Northfield, Massachusetts, where the Connecticut River winds its way through the landscape, the Northfield Chateau, also known as Shell et Shell or Burnham House, once stood as a testament to ambition, love, and the Gilded Age. This 99-room mansion, crafted in the Chateau style, was the summer dream of Francis Robert Shell, a New York businessman whose vision was as grand as the home he built. Francis and his wife Mary discovered the charm of Northfield in 1890, drawn by the spiritual teachings of evangelist D.L. Moody, who resided there. The town, with its pastoral beauty and serene atmosphere, quickly became their cherished summer retreat. After inheriting a significant fortune, Francis saw an opportunity to create a summer residence that would be a beacon of their success and a sanctuary for their family. He enlisted celebrated architect Bruce Price to bring his vision to life. Completed in 1903, the mansion was a marvel of architectural splendor, a symphony of stone with towers and arches that stood proudly against the Northfield sky. Each room was a testament to luxury and elegance, reflecting the shell's desire for a summer retreat that was both a home and a statement. For 25 summers, the mansion was alive with the joy of the Shell's presence. It was a hub of lavish gatherings, a place where they could escape the city's clamor and immerse themselves in the tranquility of their grand creation. Yet it was also a very deeply personal space, echoing with the laughter and stories of their life together. As we climb its wide stairs, we will enter the house below a grand arcade. Swinging open the vestibule's double doors, we arrive in the grand stair hall with brocaded walls leading towards the ceiling's oculus. Above us, a balustrade wraps around the circular opening with a large dome soaring overhead. On the first floor, we will venture into the reception room, glowing as golden light reflects from the silk damask wall coverings. From here, we can make our way into the main hall, mirroring the reception room in all its splendor. Set within one of the towers, the dining room embraces rounded walls with curving millwork and custom furniture to follow the room's circular border. Next, we find the drawing room, finished out with gilded mirrors and crystal chandeliers. We can take a closer look at the marble fireplace in this room to admire the intricate relief work gracefully decorating the lower mantel. The couple's bedroom continued in opulence as they enjoyed summering here year after year. However, the mansion's story took a somber turn with Francis passing in 1928. Mary, heartbroken, could no longer bear to inhabit the mansion without her beloved husband and vowed to never step foot in it again. Her summers were then spent at the Northfield Hotel next door, with the mansion a dark silhouette in the distance a grand structure now filled with silence. As the years passed, the Gilded Age's luster faded, and the mansion, too grand and costly to maintain, was eventually sold and later demolished in 1963. Before it met the Wrecking Ball, a large auction was held for its furniture and architectural elements, some of which found their way into Belcourt of Newport. Today, where this magnificent home once stood, is now a field adjacent to the Northfield Golf Club, a quiet reminder of the impermanence of grandeur. What did you think about the Northfield Chateau? Did you have a favorite room or architectural feature? Let me know down below in the comment section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.